Greetings, nerdlings. Today, we're going to be talking about food chains, food webs, and the flow of energy through different trophic levels. So what is a food chain? It's basically a bunch of feeding relationships, and all food chains start with energy from the sun. The first level of all food chains is plants, and we call plants producers. We also call them autotrophs because they produce their own food. Auto means automatically. Think about driving an automatic car. It automatically shifts the gears for you, just like plants produce their own food automatically. So food only goes up, or food chains only go up about four or five levels, because at each level, we lose almost 90% of the energy to waste. So if you look here, we have our sun, giving energy to our producers or the plants, which give their energy to herbivores, who give their energy to carnivores, who give their energy to top carnivores. Plants are called producers. What eats plants or herbivores are typically called the primary consumer. Primary consumers are eaten by secondary consumers. Secondary consumers are eaten by tertiary consumers. And if we were to add one more level, we would say that tertiary consumers are consumed by quaternary consumers. And at all levels, decomposers are breaking down dead or decaying matter. So decomposers break down the producers and the primary consumers and the secondary consumers. Even the top carnivores, once they die, they begin to be decomposed by fungus and bacteria. So that's one of the huge roles or one of the niches that bacteria and fungi play in food chains, in food webs, and ecosystems. So how is energy lost? Where does it go? So if you look at the loss of energy at the different levels of a food chain, you see that about 50% goes to waste, feces, which is poop. 33% goes to cellular respiration, which is the cost of daily living for that organism itself. And 17% goes towards growth. This 17% right here is the only percent that can get passed on to the higher trophic level. So whatever eats the bug only gets 17% of what the bug was. Now our rule of thumb if we're living in a perfect world is that 10% gets passed on at each level. So feeding levels. How much energy can you get from food? Only the energy that is actually stored in the organism can be passed on to the next level. 80 to 90% of that energy is lost from one level to the next. And a food chain, again, can only have four or five trophic levels because of the limited number that can support the highest order of carnivores. So these are two examples of food chains. This is a terrestrial meaning on Earth or on the land of Earth. So of course we have our sun giving its energy to our primary producer, which in this case is a flower. The flower is eaten by a primary consumer, which is a grasshopper. Primary consumer is eaten by the secondary consumer, which is this little kangaroo rat. The kangaroo rat is eaten by a tertiary consumer of the rattlesnake. And then the rattlesnake is eaten by a quaternary consumer, or the hawk. This down here is a marine food chain. So again, energy from the sun is used by the producers. In this case, phytoplankton is the producer. Phytoplankton means plant moving around. So phyto is plant. Plankton refers to something that floats with the water. It's not moving on its own. So the phytoplankton right here is going to be eaten by the zooplankton, which is going to be eaten by a small carnivore, which is eaten by a larger carnivore, which is eaten by the top carnivore. In this food chain, it's going to be an orca, or a common name, killer whale. Food chains are linked together into food webs because we don't typically eat just one thing. Humans don't just eat a cow every single day. We have multiple things that we eat, and so do many other animals. So who eats whom? Who's eating meat? and who's eating plants. So if you look at this diagram right here, you can pick out many, many food chains within this food web. 
So for example, if we start with phytoplankton, it could be eaten by krill, which could be eaten by a baleen whale, which could be eaten by a human. Another food chain would be phytoplankton, which is eaten by herbivorous plankton, which is eaten by a carnivorous plankton, which is eaten by a squid, which is eaten by an elephant seal, which is eaten by a human. So what I would like for you to do in your journals is actually find four food chains within this food web that I've given you. I want you to draw it out with the name of each animal or plant at each step and label it. I want you to label primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and quaternary consumer. Make sure you label them, and like I said, I want four food chains drawn out in your journals. So energy flows through our ecosystem in levels. So again, we start out with our primary producers, or our plants, which have gotten their energy from the sun. 90% of that energy is lost, so only 10% gets passed up to the primary consumers, or the herbivores. Only 10% of that gets transferred up to the secondary consumers, or carnivores, and so on and so forth. So we have different types of pyramids that represent different types of data. The first type of pyramid we're going to look at is called an energy pyramid. Energy pyramids show the transfer of energy at each trophic level, and each of those, only 10% of the energy from the previous level gets transferred up. So if we start off right here, we have light energy from the sun coming in. And if we say that 100% is at the producer level, only 10% of that energy goes to first level consumers or our primary consumers. 10% of that gets transferred to our second level consumers. And only 10% of that gets transferred to our third level consumers. So by the time I get up to our third, fourth, or fifth levels, a fraction of the percent from the beginning energy gets transferred up. The biomass pyramid is basically showing you how much mass each level needs to be supported. So 1,500 grams of grain will only support 500 grams of chicken. 500 grams of chicken will only support 50 grams of human tissue. And just to give you an example, 500 grams is really, really light. That's not even two pounds. That's about, maybe about a third of a pound. So you're talking about a lot of grain to support all of these chickens right here, and a lot of chickens to support this human. We also have a pyramid of numbers. The pyramid of numbers is just showing how many of each organism has to be eaten by the top organism in order to survive. So all of these flowers will only support these types of herbivores. So it might support one rabbit and a couple of mice and some insects. All of these primary consumers will only support a few secondary consumers, which will support one tertiary consumer. So just a little food for thought. There's always a lot of debate going on about vegetarians and meat eaters and everybody's diet. So how many people can Earth support if we're meat eaters or if we're a vegetarian? If everybody was a vegetarian, we wouldn't need as much substance, meaning that we wouldn't be as high up on the food chain or on the food pyramid. So it would take a less amount of things to support us. So looking at this, more people can live on Earth if we were all vegetarians versus fewer people living on Earth if we were all carnivores. Well, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.